Can we humans ever call space our home? A question that sparks both wonder and skepticism. Today we embark on a journey to the final frontier, exploring the idea of space colonization. But as we reach for the stars, we must also recognize that we are creatures of Earth, a planet that has shaped our evolution in every conceivable way. From the gravitational pull that anchors us to the atmosphere that shelters us, our biology is intertwined with our home planet. As we delve into the cosmos, we confront an array of challenges. From the very physiology of our bodies to the technology we wield, the dream of space colonization faces numerous challenges. Firstly, our bodies did not evolve for space living. This statement may seem obvious, but when we dive deeper into the physiological impacts of space, we begin to grasp its significance. Our bodies, fine-tuned by millions of years of evolution on Earth, find themselves in a battle against the unfamiliar conditions of outer space. Let's talk about microgravity, one of the most immediate challenges faced by astronauts. In the weightless environment of space, our bones and muscles no longer need to support our body weight. Sounds like fun, right? Well, not quite. This results in bone density loss and muscle atrophy, similar to what happens when you don't exercise for a long time. And here's the kicker, it happens at a much faster pace in space. But the physiological battle doesn't stop there. Our cardiovascular system, designed to efficiently pump blood against the Earth's gravity, struggles in space. In zero gravity, blood tends to pool in the upper body, which can lead to a whole host of health problems. Now you might be thinking, why don't we just create artificial gravity? An excellent question. Artificial gravity could indeed mitigate some of these health issues. However, creating a constant and stable artificial gravity environment is no small feat. We're talking about spinning spacecraft or building rotating habitats, both of which present enormous engineering challenges. The physiological battle of space living forces us to question our biological limitations. It reminds us that we are creatures of Earth, evolved and adapted to thrive under conditions specific to our home planet. Despite our technological advancements, the human body remains a product of Earth's environment. So what's the verdict? Can we adapt to life in space? Are we destined to remain Earthbound? The truth is, we don't know yet. But what we do know is that our bodies as they are might just not be cut out for life beyond Earth. Next, we delve into the mind, our psychological fortress. Or is it our Achilles heel? As we venture into the cosmic abyss, we carry with us not just our physical bodies, but also our minds, our emotions, and our very human need for social interaction. How do these fare in the face of the space colonization? Imagine the isolation. Space is not just a physical void, it can also be a social one. Astronauts are confined to small spaces for extended periods, with limited contact with their loved ones back on Earth. This isolation, combined with the constant pressure of survival in an alien environment, can lead to significant psychological stress. Then there's confinement. The vastness of space, ironically, might confine us to tiny capsules or habitats, much like a goldfish in a bowl. This could lead to a phenomenon called cabin fever, a state of restlessness, irritability, and even despair, which can affect the crew's dynamics and efficiency. But wait, there's more. Our bodies have evolved to function under the influence of Earth's natural light cycles. In space, these cycles are disrupted, potentially leading to sleep disorders, mood swings, and even depression. And let's not forget our innate connection to nature. The sight of a blue sky, the smell of fresh rain, the feel of grass under our feet. These are things we take for granted on Earth. In space, the lack of these natural stimuli could have profound effects on our mental health. The social dynamics in such confined spaces can also be challenging. Living in close quarters under constant stress, without the possibility of a timeout, could lead to tension and conflict among crew members, further exacerbating the psychological strain. So as we prepare to conquer the final frontier, we must also prepare our minds for the journey. We must develop strategies and technologies to mitigate these psychological challenges, to ensure that our minds remain as healthy as our bodies in the vast, cold expanse of space. The mental hurdles of space colonization might prove to be as challenging as the physical ones. But let's say we overcome our biological and psychological limitations. What about the technology we need to survive? Space colonization isn't just a matter of packing our bags and setting off for a new cosmic address. There are significant technological hurdles to conquer, starting with the sustainability of life support systems. 
In the vacuum of space, we can't simply open a window for fresh air. We need to generate our own oxygen, filter out harmful gases, and maintain a stable temperature and humidity level. And then there's the issue of water. We can't exactly install a pipeline from Earth to Mars, so we need to find ways to recycle water and perhaps even extract it from the alien soil. Next, we come across the problem of radiation exposure. You see, on Earth, we're protected by the planet's magnetic field, which acts like a shield against harmful cosmic rays. But in space, we're exposed to the full brunt of this radiation, which can cause serious health problems. Therefore, developing effective radiation protection is a crucial aspect of space colonization technology. Lastly, let's talk about our dependence on Earth for essential resources. Right now, all our space missions rely heavily on supplies sent from Earth. But imagine a scenario where a Mars colony has to wait for months to receive essential supplies from Earth. Not very practical, right? Hence the concept of in-situ resource utilization, which is a fancy way of saying living off the land, becomes paramount. This could involve mining asteroids for metals, extracting water from lunar ice, or growing food in Martian soil. These are just a few of the technological challenges we face in our quest to colonize space, and while they are daunting, they also drive innovation and progress. After all, necessity is the mother of invention, and there's no greater necessity than survival. The technological leaps needed for space colonization are not just about getting there, but about thriving there. And finally, even if we could colonize space, should we? This question propels us into the realm of ethics, a dimension as vast and challenging as space itself. When we talk about colonizing other planets, we're not just discussing a technical feat. We're contemplating an action that could fundamentally alter the nature of those celestial bodies. For instance, a process known as terraforming, which would manipulate a planet's environment to make it Earth-like, could irrevocably change the extraterrestrial landscapes we're so keen to explore. Do we have the right to dramatically alter these pristine environments that have existed for billions of years? Then there's the possibility of encountering extraterrestrial life forms. While no definitive proof of alien life has been discovered yet, we cannot dismiss the potential. If we were to find microbial life on Mars or any other planet, how would our colonization efforts impact these indigenous organisms? Are we prepared to potentially jeopardize another form of life in our pursuit of space colonization? Lastly, we must consider our responsibility towards future generations. If we establish colonies on other planets, we're planting the seeds of interplanetary societies. But we must ask ourselves, are we ready to shoulder the responsibility that comes with this? We need to consider the long-term implications for those future generations, from their physical health to their social structures and cultural identities. Moreover, the concept of interplanetary diplomacy comes into play. How would we manage relationships between Earth and its extraterrestrial colonies? What would be the legal and ethical framework for such a scenario? These are questions we must address before embarking on the journey of space colonization. The ethical implications of space colonization reach far beyond our current understanding and warrant serious contemplation. It's not just about the how of space colonization, but also about the should. As we continue to gaze at the stars and dream about reaching them, we must also remember to look inward to our own ethical compass and ensure we're navigating this vast unknown in a way that respects all life and the integrity of the cosmos. So, will we ever call space our home? We've journeyed through the cosmos in our exploration of this question, confronting the multitude of challenges that await us beyond our blue planet. We've examined the physiological battles we'd face in space, from the toll of microgravity on our bone density, muscle mass, and cardiovascular health, to the potential solutions like artificial gravity. We've delved into the psychological strain of space colonization, acknowledging the harsh realities of isolation, confinement, and the mental health issues that could arise from the lack of natural light cycles and connection to nature. Our exploration didn't stop there. We've navigated the technological hurdles standing between us and a life among the stars, discussing the sustainability of life support systems, radiation exposure and protection, and our current dependence on Earth for essential resources. We've also contemplated the ethical dilemmas of colonizing other planets. We pondered the preservation of extraterrestrial environments, the potential impact on indigenous life forms, and our responsibility towards future generations, and the diplomacy of interplanetary relations. Each of these aspects presents its own set of challenges, 
and overcoming them will require not just scientific and technological advancements, but also a deep understanding of our own human nature and our ethical responsibilities as space explorers. In conclusion, the dream of calling space our home is a complex one, filled with hurdles that test the very limits of our capabilities and understanding. But who knows what the future holds? Our journey into the cosmos has only just begun. While the stars might beckon us, for now, Earth remains our only home, our only haven.